Let's say football's roster is set for 2022. It's it's not. That's a lie. I don't know why I said that to start the show. Football rosters are never set. Whether it's injuries, now the transfer portal, the spring is going to bring churn for the Penn State football roster for a certainty. But the Nittany Lions are now in uh, winter conditioning. They're hard at work for 2022, and the and at least the guys that are here, the guys that are here for the spring. So as we take a look at who that is, we can get an idea of what the personality of the offense could be next season, according to who's returning and what those players' strengths and weaknesses are. We're taking a look at the Penn State passing attack today, because that was a large part of the problem in 2022, and we've beat the run game to death. Spent a lot of time talking about offensive linemen and running backs over at bluewhiteillustrated.com over the last week and a half. I'm your host, Thomas Ryan Carr, here on the BWI Daily, by the way. If you want to subscribe to bluewhiteillustrated.com, it's $1. The link is in the description, and it's the first one there. $1, 12 months of access. You can get all the insight information from Blue White Illustrated, including what I just mentioned, that the roster churn is never done, who Penn State is targeting in the portal, what they're doing about that, and what the situation is. We have covered that here and there, but you can get all the information all in one place for just a dollar for a year. Okay, so let's start with the Penn State offensive line, even though I said we're talking about the receiving game, because I think that's going to inform how all of this goes. Penn State is actively pursuing offensive linemen in the portal, veterans, because they lost three starters in 2021, from 2021. The entire left side is gone of the offensive line. Now, you may think, and I may think, certain things about those players that are replacing them. Olaf Ashanu, Landon Tangwell in particular, impressed in their limited exposure on the field last season. But just like the right side from last year with, with Juice Scruggs and Caden Wallace, how'd that go? As far as there were, there were people that thought that was going to be great. Those guys look good in 2020. They flashed big play potential as linemen. And once we saw, once they got into more situations, we found the warts and the holes in their game. So we're not going to assume that it's going to be roses and sunshine for the Penn State offensive line. I do think in the run game, they will be better. I'm, I'm very close to certain about that. But as pass protectors, there's more to learn, especially about the most important position. Actually, both tackles. Freshman Ola Fashanu uh, is going to be a redshirt sophomore next season. And is Caden Wallace coming back at right tackle? As pass protectors, that's where you start along the offensive line. Could be some bumpy roads there, specifically. And that's going to affect the deep passing game, which is what Penn State really wants to have, an explosive passing attack. Now, there is a thousand ways to cut that meat, that you can find ways to generate explosive plays. But really, it comes down to two different styles, whether it's with play action or not, throwing the ball down the field. That is number one. The ball goes mostly through the air. The quarterback does most of the work, drops the ball into the receiver's hands. He catches it and gets whatever yards are left. Duh. That's how deep passing works. Or the receiver does most of the work. You throw the ball to the receiver somewhere before that deep passing game, and then that guy breaks tackles and makes plays with the ball in his hands. That's what we're focusing on today because I think Penn State's going to be better at that next year with the personnel and the mix of players that are going to be on the field. So this is really about finding a path to success for Penn State because with the offensive line the way it is and Sean Clifford's historic struggles to get the ball down the field consistently on target, we're going to say that that is not the primary function or what you should do with the offense. It should still be part of the game, but if you get better production out of your receivers with the ball in their hands, it takes some of the pressure off the quarterback. And that was the problem last year was everything was on Sean Clifford. So the better running game in 2022 and these players, what we're going to get into, I think it's going to be, it spells a better outcome for Penn state's receiving opportunities uh, in 2022. And let's get to some information as to why I think that. So last season, Penn state broke 49 tackles by their receivers. So when the ball was thrown, Penn State receivers caught the ball and broke 49 tackles, which is actually fifth in the Big Ten. But if you consider the amount of times they threw the football and where those tackles were broken, much less effective 
much less valuable than they needed to be. So we'll get into the value of those here in just a second, but that's the part that I think has to get better. Penn State, in order to have a, a better passing attack, they need to be second or third in forced missed tackles, according to PFF, in 2022. Now, Maryland led the Big Ten with 78 of them, but their passing attack was so short-driven, passes at the line of scrimmage or under 10 yards, that they had to have that. It was just by volume, they got more of those. But the value of those is different. So let's take a look at Parker Washington, because this is another, this is illustrating that point of the value of the tackle, the farther you go down the field, when you break that, the more valuable it is. And Penn State threw the ball to the intermediate, intermediate part of the field, the second most of any part. So they threw it short, or they threw it up to 19 yards because they couldn't quite get the deep passing game to work in the first season under Mike Yersich. And as their leading uh, generator of plays this way, Parker Washington held up his own. But when you look at where that happened, it's not as valuable. And this is a change in how I think they should use him next season. You see, he is a threat to break tackles at any part of the field, but he just didn't get as many attempts down the football field. In the intermediate range, where they probably are the most valuable when you also have the most opportunities to break tackles, he only broke one, but he didn't get a lot of targets in that area. He was the chain mover, the underneath uh, receiver that caught balls in the middle of the football field and then was penned in by four guys. If you make one guy miss, that's great, but that's not that's not the same value. Now let's understand a couple things now we're talking about the value of broken tackles. Most of them are going to come in short yardage areas. Those areas we talked about behind the line of scrimmage and in the short area. But when you get to deep passing, you know, 20 yards down the field, there are less opportunities to break tackles there. But if you do, that's very valuable. And you saw Parker Washington actually broke a couple on deep uh, passes where he was the target of a pass 19 yards plus downfield. So he can do it and he needs to see more valuable targets next season. Then he can contribute more. But this is where Penn State picking up Mitchell Tinsley from Western Kentucky, I think, changes the math here. If you look at the value of where he broke tackles in that 10 to 19 area, he would have ranked uh, first in the Big Ten in the number of times he broke a big play from that position. Again, he was still productive everywhere else, but he didn't see those less valuable targets at Western Kentucky. And it shows up on film. On, on deep slant routes, short posts, uh, deep overs, crossing routes, things like that down the field, he has the ability to catch the ball, break tackles, and make big plays. And you might be saying, yes, it's against Western Kentucky in the Conference USA. It's a different level of competition. They played Indiana and Michigan State last year. And I know the joke's about Michigan State, but that it's a big that's a Big Ten defense. Penn State went up against them this year and didn't have the same productivity. So he's bringing that to the table. More big plays that the quarterback doesn't have to do all the heavy lifting for. That's going to be the key for Penn State football. So that combination of Tinsley and of, of Parker Washington, I think is going to generate better value out of the receiver position. And this shouldn't be, by the way, this should not be seen as any sort of slight on Jahan Dotson. His way of winning is, just was is different. His ability to catch balls against zone coverage and and get the yards that are there is invaluable. But it does create, especially in the in the ecosystem last year, a station to station passing attack. You're not getting any yards after catch. You're not getting those explosive plays where you take one one make one guy miss and get the other 40 yards. He was much more of a receiver that beat people with angles and beat people with route running and was a great deep play threat that wasn't unlocked enough because of the struggles. I do think that a more physical sized player, 205 in Tinsley, six foot two, you know, more uh, expressive in his, in his lower body strength, that guy can help the situation in a different way. Now there's one group of players we haven't gotten to yet that have to pick up the slack. And we've talked a lot about them. It's the Penn State tight ends. They while were better than they were advertised, especially as run blockers last year, none of them held up their end of the bargain as receivers. We didn't talk about that last week. Here we're going to get into what they need to do next season. 
So as a as a as a tight end, there's really two ways that the you in the college level you're used in the passing game. Two ways you can add extra value. The first is contested catches. Going up in a situation where you didn't beat the guy cleanly, but the guy the quarterback throws it up to you anyway, and you catch more of those balls than not, especially over the middle in traffic. That's your job as a jumbo wide receiver. Penn State had three contested catches in 2021. Pat Frymuth playing about four games had three himself the year before. So that part of the game evaporated for Penn State football. That does come down to the level of trust that the quarterback has in those players to actually throw the ball to them. But early on in the season, when Bretton Strange goes one for four and you throw potential and would-be interceptions because of those plays, that's how that evaporated. So next year, Penn State has to be better at that. And the guy that actually showed the most promise at the end of the season was Tyler Warren, who had all of nine targets, but caught two contested catches down the, down the stretch. One of them, you know, as you see here against Rutgers, was, was a really, really good play. So getting more from Brenton Strange and from Theo Johnson in this area as the primary receivers is going to be key. Or Tyler Warren has to take a step forward and be a part of the passing game because he's shown the ability as a former quarterback to know how to present a good target to the quarterback and go get the football. The other area that we've talked in this whole episode about are breaking tackles as a tight end. That's the rub that you're supposed to create. That's the problem you're supposed to create as a tight end, especially in Penn State system with former converted high school wide receivers playing tight end is you've got to be so big that safeties can't cover you and you get those contested catches and so fast that if you put a linebacker on, on, on in coverage as the defense, you're wrong that way too. Penn State didn't create enough of those problems because of their personnel. So breaking tackles against those safeties or against those linebackers that can't keep up, that's another important thing. All told, Penn State had seven broken tackles from their tight ends. And again, lumping them into a group because the lead receiver shifted throughout the year. Bretton Strange did the most work there, again, as a player who got more passes thrown his way early and did have some productivity. Got to get more. Again, we're, we're operating on the idea that the offensive line and the quarterback need help because of the situation that presents itself with a lot of uncertainty and churn up front. So that's where the, the tight ends have to hold up their end of the bargain and be a part of the passing attack. It doesn't have to be a lead receiver. Penn State has two lead receivers and, and the offense flows through the boundary for uh, Mike Yersich. But if you're going to be a tight end and you're going to get select targets, you need to make more of them when you're targeted. And that is going to be on... Uh, Strange and Johnson especially, but we'll see where Tyler Warren fits into the category overall. So those are the important factors that I think can take a step forward in 2022 for this receiving group, receivers, tight ends, and backs. And that's why with the addition of Mitchell Tinsley, I think this all fits better because you've got that guy replacing Jahan Dotson with a different skill set that might be able to help in a different way. Parker Washington can take a step forward, and I think he needs to see more valuable targets. And then finally, that reduces down the number of players at the other boundary receiver position that have to make big plays because Keandre Lambert Smith, he's shown he can be that big play guy. Now you don't need him doing a bunch of other things. That can be his role. Whatever you can get from Harrison Wallace and the other young players that are coming up, including Liam Clifford, that is creating value of depth and competition. And when you factor in the tight ends and what I think is going to take a step forward as receivers, one of them is going to take a step forward as a receiver. There is more opportunity for explosive plays in 2022 that don't have to be so reliant on the quarterback throwing the ball deep to a receiver in single coverage. So that's going to be what we uh, what I'm looking for next season. That will also help once we figure out what Penn State's doing on the offensive line with the players they bring in through the transfer portal or if they do. And we'll figure that out. We'll keep you up to date on all of that at bluewhiteillustrated.com and here on the BWI Daily Edition. I'm your Thomas Frank Carr. The outro music's playing. If you watch this much, you like the video. Hit the like button and we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs>